we're gonna play with a new viral powder foundation, a brand new powder foundation by Maybelline. This is their Superstay 24 hour hybrid powder foundation, $14.99 and there are 16 shades available. So many shades are sold out, so definitely go in store to Ulta's, Target's, CVS. Jackie found these, Ulta? Yeah, two different Ulta's. She found these at two different Ulta's. We have 120 and 128. This hybrid technology has the performance of a liquid with the comfort of a powder. It's supposed to have a medium to full coverage with a soft matte finish. It's supposed to last up to 24 hours with sweat resistance, resistance, water resistance, and transfer resistance. Those are some crazy high claims. The only concern I have, I personally never found a powder foundation to be comfortable throughout the day. It's usually very tight on my skin. It pulls on my skin and it just starts looking very dry. So I'm really curious about this one. I've seen people apply this with a damp beauty blender or a damp sponge along with a brush. The texture looks really smooth and really silky. I didn't touch it yet, I'm excited to feel it. But you open it up and there's two compartments. You have the foundation, then you have a mirror on the other side with the applicator, which is really nice. I like that there's a mirror included and it's pretty slim. I like the packaging, very slim. So let's touch it together. Let's feel her. Let's see how soft and smooth. Yeah, it's very buttery, very silky. Wow, okay. As of right now, it feels very silky and smooth. But I kind of feel like it's going to attach to the top of my skin and just sit there and not blend in. So we were going back and forth. Should we prime half of the face? Should we not? I don't think I am going to because I wanna compare a blender versus a brush. But I did use my trusty Bobbi Brown, the Enriched Face Base. And this is technically a moisturizer and a primer in one. And this one works with pretty much every single base that I have tried under the sun and it doesn't do anything weird. So we're just gonna stick to that and let's just go right in. I'm gonna do a quick concealing and quick cream contour and then we'll go with the foundation on top to give that more soft look. Huda Beauty hashtag full filter concealer. Cream contour, Westman Atelier. I'm gonna go with the e.l.f. Total Sponge, Beauty Sponge, nice and damp. And I like that it has a flat edge. I'm gonna work the foundation into this. And then instead of like buffing, I'm gonna start just stamping it into my skin or onto my skin. Oh, that is yellow. And that's 120. Wow. Oh boy. Wow. That looks a lot lighter in the, wow, that looks bad. Wow, that's ugly. Not even the color, but the texture on the skin. That looks horrendous. To bring it down my neck to get somewhat of a match. Bring it on my ears. Oh my gosh, this is not pretty. And it's already feeling so dry and tight on the skin. You know what? Let me take their applicator like so. And it's a very powdery look. Look, look at that. This is even worse. It's so patchy. I'm gonna take the Honest Beauty foundation brush. I like this one because it's very dense, but it's still extremely soft and I like it with other powder foundations that I've tried. So hopefully this will work. And I like to just really gently tap this into my skin. It looks so much better with the brush. You're not getting that heavy coverage, but look at that difference. It looks so much better. It's still not pretty but much better than with a damp sponge. They were saying a damp sponge helps this foundation melt more into your skin. I'm not seeing it. It just looks so heavy. Look at that. I feel like even the color match looks so much better with a brush. It looks a lot more natural. Still feels tight, <laughs> but it looks better in person and on camera. Jackie's telling me to wipe this other side off. I mean, still the color is not as great. I'm bringing down my neck as far as possible. I feel like all your colors are pretty orangey. Yeah, they're not, you can't really get a no neutral. neutral or a nice cool tone. They're all 
warmer yellow. From far away, the forehead looks really soft and airbrushed, but up close, <laughs> it's not bad. Up close, it's not bad. Would you look at that? Wow. Wow. Okay. Their applicator, not great. It's very patchy, but with the brush, it's really stunning. And not like buffing it on, stamping it on. Wow, it's still very dry though. And I'm not seeing how they're, they're saying it's a soft matte finish. This is a full blown matte cover, like matte finish. Oh, that texture. I mean, that, that feeling is really tight around my mouth and jaw area on both sides. I'm gonna go on this side and blend down my neck to kind of distribute some of that color. From far away, this side is very airbrushed, very smooth, very soft, but it's definitely a very flat matte finish. I'm not seeing a soft matte finish. And I like the soft contour that I have going on. You can still see my under eyes, they're nice and brightened, but I didn't bring the foundation up right underneath my eyes where I have the concealer, just a little bit right here and around my nose. I would say it's a pretty solid full coverage foundation. You do have to layer a lot with a brush, but again, with a brush, which is hilarious, you're gonna get more of a natural finish, more skin-like finish. With a sponge, with their sponge, with their applicator, you are gonna get more of a true full coverage, even if the sponge is damp, because it's kind of soaking the product up. I don't like a damp sponge with this particular foundation. It does not look good. I'm gonna use my Hourglass Ambient Unlocked Palette, the Elephant version. I'm just gonna bronze up my skin a little bit and use the blushes in here as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlighter from Pat McGrath. This is her Skin Fetish Ultra Grow, wow, Ultra Glow Highlighter in Divine Rose. But this highlighter, why I like it so much, it's kind of like her blushes. I feel like they're so underrated. They have a really beautiful, soft, silky, buttery texture and they blend really well, they layer really well, and they last really well. I just love her products. Okay, makeup is on, and I didn't really notice any kind of discrepancies from one side to the other, but I still prefer the one with the brush. Everything looks a little more natural and soft, even up close. It doesn't look as heavy and cakey and powdery versus the dampened beauty blender side. I'm hoping it's going to melt a little bit more into my skin. It's going to become one of my skin, because as of right now, it does not look good around the pores. It's having a really hard time right here on my left side where I applied with the beauty blender, I have texture, an uneven texture where I have a little bit, um, where like skin peeled, but it was a long time ago. So there's a little bit unevenness right here on the nose and I can see my skin just kind of peeking through and it's really patchy looking. It's looking really heavy around my mouth, all the texture is really visible and it's exaggerated. I think this foundation might be good for those that don't mind the heaviness, that already like the powder and that like to apply a powder foundation with more of a dense brush. I am so impressed with how my forehead and my nose look <laughs> with this foundation brush by Honest Beauty. Again, one of my favorite brushes for foundation from the drugstore. I think this is a great dupe for my other favorite foundation brush from Bobbi Brown. But the overall finish, the texture, how it feels and how it looks is so much better than a sponge. Really curious how this is going to wear. Hopefully I get at least two updates or at least one update during the day and then the update at the very end of the night. You guys, it's been five hours and no, this foundation, one of the worst that I've seen on my skin. You look up close and just the texture, just the way it's breaking apart. It looks like I have cement on my skin. It is so bad. The tightness is still there. It just, it does not feel good. It does not look good. I honestly can't wait to take this off. I'm debating to take it off right now because I don't want to wear it longer, but I'm going to try to wear it for at least eight hours and see how it looks. There's three more hours left. I can do this. I got this, Moana. You got this. You're not going anywhere. It's okay. Wow. Not impressed with the longevity of this foundation whatsoever. We made it to nine hours. One hour extra than I was anticipating. So this is what we're looking like. Far away, it doesn't look horrendous. <laughs> but close up, guys, close up, bad, bad. It somehow looks extra wrinkly. It looks saggy. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain that. But the texture is beyond, I mean. 
we are just texture galore. Mmm, so much happening. So much happening. We're pretty oily on the forehead, but not bad. I mean, I could kind of fix this. Still see the blush, the highlight, the contour, the powder, bronzer, all that good stuff. Okay, I made up my conclusion. I think this powder foundation would be a phenomenal topper to finish off your makeup, to set your makeup in place, to give it that more of an airbrush look, but also add some coverage. Personally, if you like the more natural look for your skin, for your face, you are going to not like this one bit. It is heavy, it is cakey. Even my sister, I'm like, all right, be honest. How does my skin look today? How does my makeup look today? She's like, yeah, mm, yeah, you look very, you look very cakey. It's there. It's, I don't want to look at your face, but I kind of can't help myself. That's, that's what it looks like. If you want more coverage for a lighter, sheer base, and then you want to set it in place, you might like this. You might like this on your cheeks. You might like this around your chin, your jaw, your forehead, your nose. But for a full blown foundation, I don't think you will enjoy this if you're not into this type of a look or product. I think a lot of people will enjoy this to a point. And I think I might use this still as a setting powder to get more coverage, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think for a setting powder, if you go pretty light-handed with it, you might get quality wear out of it. I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching, spending time with me, and I'll see you next one very soon. Bye.